All right, today's video is going to be on depression. It's something that I have experience with, with people who just had legitimate reasons at certain times in their lives to feel depressed, and I also have experience with it when it comes to people who have chemical imbalances in their brain where they're genuinely gonna feel a certain way even if there's not necessarily a reason to feel that way. And it's something that I've experienced uh, for a very good portion of my life. And it's something I've experienced myself and it's something that I've also experienced in particular with my mother. Uh, how to put this? Um, this is something that I've been debating discussing for another video because somebody sent me a really long message on suicide and they had specific questions. And it's not something that I've, I've been debating back and forth whether to delve into that in a YouTube video. But to keep it simple and to the point here, it was very apparent from a young age for me that my mother had certain problems. And um, one of the ways that my mother used to deal with it was through blaming the people in her family. So she was very, very depressed. She was very, very anxious. She had this OCD complex. Like if, if you put a spoon down in a sink and she can hear the spoon dropping into the sink, she will assume that you destroyed the sink and cry about it until five in the morning and then say how you did it on purpose to ruin her life. I digress. That, 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 that could be a five hour video in and of itself. But I noticed that she was depressed and by the time I got to age six or seven, I thought that I could use logic and reason to try to talk somebody out of irrational behavior and irrational thinking. I think that's something that's kind of ingrained into all, you know, men's heads. It's just part of the, the, the fucking chromosome or the DNA structure that we just think that if we just talk enough, that we can just solve every problem, that it doesn't have to do with, with, with uh, listening, it doesn't have to do with empathy, it has nothing to do with just being there for somebody. We just think that if we talk enough that we can solve the fucking problem. And by age six or seven, this was in full force with me. And one of the reasons that I was motivated to solve this problem is because I was sick and tired of being referred to as the reason for this grown woman's um, for this this grown woman's life problems. I mean, she went to places like Freedom from Fear. She went to therapists. She went to um, psychiatrists, and you know, she it didn't matter. She she would still say, "Listen, I don't. I really probably don't need all that stuff. If only I didn't have to deal with you and your father, I would be just fine. You're the cause." And and it's one of those things where it's like you don't really understand as a four or a five year old how you could be the cause of somebody else acting in such a fashion. But I digress. My idea, and this is an idea that I stand by to this day, and it's an idea that I practice because it works on me, and it also worked on my mother to some extent when she would actually take the time to listen to it. I remember going up to her one day, and every single day for like 10 fucking years, I thought that if I just have a rational conversation with this woman, that I will, one of these days, I will break through and I will get a point across. And if I get that point across, that's a small victory. Every now and then, like, you know, once every three months, I would get her to laugh about something and nod her head, and then realize that I was right about something, and we would make progress. It would always go back, but we'd make a little bit of progress. And one of the things that I remember saying around six or seven years old is, think of it, I want you to think of your life like my plate. If you put a pizza bagel and Pop-Tarts and, uh, you know, I think it was like a cream cheese bagel and Oreos and whatever else on my plate and some corn and some mashed potatoes, okay, you know, I don't like the fact that you put corn on my plate. I don't like corn. I hate corn. Uh, but but look, I, look at all the other things I have. I'm still going to smile. But if you put on my plate just 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 the corn, um, now now I'm miserable. Now I'm sad. Now I'm gonna have a, a fit, and and and, uh, and you're not gonna be happy. Even though the same corn is on my plate in both situations. The thing is that when you only put corn on my plate, now I can only focus on this one thing that that makes me miserable because that is that is my dinner. My dinner is not pizza bagel. It's not this bagel. It's not mashed potatoes. It's not Oreos. It's not uh, whatever the hell else I mentioned. It's just corn, and that sucks. And I think that life is the same way. See, right now, you're sitting down on the couch, and you're talking about the things that make you sad. And you're talking about the fact that we make you sad. And we're you're talking about the fact that you're, you're, you're just focusing on how sad you are. And I'm not, saying that, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do this. I'm not saying that maybe your life at home really does suck and that we're just so fucking horrible as like a four to seven year old person. I'm so bad as a human being. My dad is such a bad human being that we just make you that miserable. Whatever. You can focus on that if you want. But what if you had other things to do so that even though you felt this misery, you had this internal feeling, it wasn't the only thing on your plate? 
What if your plate is your life and your hobbies and your jobs and your friends and your conversations and your TV shows and the things that you do and the interests that you have are the different food groups? So that when you get a food group that sucks, it sucks, but you can kind of mix it in with all these other things that are good. And this is the way that I try to live my life today. I have many reasons to be depressed, I assure you. There is some that I'm willing to talk about on YouTube. There is some that I will never mention on YouTube until I die. I have, I've had many reasons to be depressed. I've lost $30,000 over the course of a day. I've had business partners that I thought were in my corner that in reality were just there to, to wait for the, just the right moment for me to fail so that they can come in and take full control of the business and take um, you know, every percentage away from me. I've, uh, you know, again, I, I've been there to get a call that your mother has committed suicide. Uh, what else is there here? I mean. I've been there to get audited. I've been there when somebody that I thought was, was somebody that loved and cared about me, I come home and they're like on the couch with another dude. I mean, trust me, I, there are a lot of things over the course of my life that, that have happened that could cause me to feel depressed, that could cause me to not feel good about myself. And uh, when you lose $30,000 and you realize that that happened in one day, when, you, when bad things happen in general, when somebody quits with no notice right as you opened a new store, that you were relying, you know, when, when this stuff happens, it's easy to get depressed if that's the only thing on your plate. And I want you to think about this. If you deal with a customer who's really angry at you because they claim that you destroyed something when they actually brought it to you destroyed by another store, and they scream at you, they curse at you, and they say, oh, you're a scam and they're going to sue you, that's your day. That's a pretty shitty day, right? And then you just think about it, and you sit in your chair, and you think about it, and you think about it some more. That's a really fucking bad day. Now let's say you have that same customer, that customer comes into the store and they say, you ruined this, you destroyed this, I'm gonna sue you, blah, blah, blah. And then you watch a grade A under A video with, your, with the salesperson and you laugh. And then you have another customer come in and you talk to them because you're not so depressed from the first experience. You're still open to the idea that there's a full day. And you laugh and you have a good conversation. And then you go to the gym for an hour and a half and you lift about 5% more than you did the last workout and you finally pass a plateau that you had that you, that you never thought you would, you would pass. And then you decide to walk through the park and you see something that just makes you happy that you're not used to seeing. And then you take the train home and you go to the restaurant by your apartment that you don't usually go to, but you go there and you wind up having a conversation that's interesting. You get drawn into a conversation that you're having with, uh, with the cashier and another person who's a regular of the restaurant. And then you sit home and you play a video game for an hour and then I pet my cat. Which one of those is a better day? See, when you have multiple things on your plate, the same thing could be happening, but it becomes a smaller part of your overall life. So let's say that I only have one thing on my plate. Even though it's the same amount of misery as if there were 10 things on my plate, that is now 100% of how I feel. Whereas if I have multiple things on my plate, if I have the conversation at the restaurant, the good day at the gym, the laughing with the coworker watching the video, and the good experience with another customer, by my math, now 80% of my day is reason to be happy, and 20% of my day is reason to be depressed. So what I've done there is it's, it's almost kind of like a kind of insurance for me. The more things that I have going on in my life, the more things I'm trying to do, the more goals that I'm trying to reach, and the more situations I toss myself into, the le the, there's a less likelihood that any one of those things going wrong is going to cause me to be depressed. It's very easy for people who do not have a chemical imbalance to become depressed when the one item on their plate that makes up 100% of their day, 100% of their life, goes bad. It's also easy if that item on your plate that even just takes up 50% of your day, 50% of your life, goes bad. But if you have diverse interests, if you have things to do, if you have other hobbies, what you're going to notice is that you're no longer at the, uh, at the mercy of one item being able to cause you to feel bad about yourself and be incredibly, incredibly depressed. My mother never got better. And it was something that just spiraled and spiraled and spiraled, unfortunately, until the day that she passed. And it was something that until the day that she passed, she was still blaming on us. It's, you know, it's not that I have a chemical imbalance, even though I'm on medication. It's not that I, that I need to go to therapy. It's not that there may be something wrong with the way I think. When you drop a spoon into a sink, 
I, you, it's because you ruined my house, you ruined my sink, you ruined my life, and you must have been doing it intentionally. That's why I'm the way, I, that was the way she was her entire life. So I can't say that I fixed the problem. But what I can say is that when she had a job, and she went out with her friends, and she watched reruns of Golden Girls and the Honeymooners that we taped for her, and she, uh, and she volunteered at a foundation that was, ne that was near her house, that was, I think it was the Alzheimer's Foundation or something like that that she was volunteering at. When she had all of that in her life, she would still, and then at the end of the day, maybe one of us would decide, let's go walking for two or three or five miles and just look around and just forget about all the crap. She'll get me wrong, she would still be depressed. At the end of the day, there was still depression. But there was a much lower level of depression in this individual, even without treatment, even without proper medication, without proper therapy, without proper psychiatry. There was still a considerably lower level of depression because now the plate was full. You had the reruns of the Golden Girls and the Honeymooners, which, by the way, are two amazing TV shows. You had to walk for a few miles, you had that exercise, and also that ability to just walk someplace you've never walked before and experience something new. You had the, the um, experience of working at a, at a charitable foundation, dealing with a mess, organizing that mess, and then, real, and then actually seeing the fruits of your labor as a place that used to be a mess is now generating income for a positive cause. You had that feeling at work when you did it well at your job and you were just talking to and meeting new people. So you have this thing where your life, you could, you could have that same depressing moment. But when that depressing moment takes up a smaller amount of your day, it doesn't happen to cripple you as badly as it does when that moment takes up the entirety of your day. And that's something that I notice with myself, and it's something that I try to practice with myself. I try to make sure that at any given time in my life that I'm not just focusing on one fucking thing. Because if I'm just focusing on doing one thing, I'm not trying for new things, I'm not trying to do new things, I'm not trying to get involved in something else, then it's very easy for that depression to come over me. It's very easy to think about the bad things that have happened in the past. It's very easy to think about the things that I don't have now. It's very easy to think about the problems in business, personal, and my health life that I face right now. And to be honest with you, there are some times where I got news that was just so damn bad. It's, not, it's news that I, just, I, I have no intention of sharing on YouTube. And this is coming as somebody who's okay telling you that I lost $30,000 in one day and that my mother had committed suicide. There is just some news that I've gotten where if I didn't have other things on my plate, I might have done things that, 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 that I wouldn't have even had the chance to regret. But the reason that you, you one of the things that's always helped me in those times is, is having multiple things on my plate, is having, let's see what happens with, a, with starting a, a laptop repair business. Let's see if I can learn uh, all the intricacies of how a 40-year-old analog audio console works. Let's see if I can dive into this internship at Avatar Studios and spend 40 to 80 hours a week here while going to college. Let's see if while going to college I can have a paying job at Progressive Music in the Film Center building while working at Avatar and going to college. Let's see if, you know, they're just, let's see if I can uh, implement a new exercise routine along in with all of this stuff. Let me meet some people who are also implementing this new exercise routine, even if I wind up fucking hating them, which with most people that I meet, this may surprise people that watch the channel, I wind up not getting along with them, but let's just see what happens just for the hell of it. I'm probably not gonna get along with them. I don't get along with most people, except for little Blackberry over here, but it might be a good experience. And the whole idea is you have to have multiple things on your plate. You have to have a lot of things that you're doing. Again, in, in, um, in 2014, I remember going on vacation to visit my dad. And then I also went to visit E-Tech Parts in Kansas because um, one of the people that I forget, I'm trying to remember his name, Jeremy, so I, I feel so bad that I forget his name. The only name I remember is the, the sales douche at Asset Genie, Jeremy Bilski, but Jeremy, there was some, so, Jeremy something at E-Tech Parts. Uh, and he gave me some insight and feedback on the YouTube videos that was generally interesting. And he, actually, and he was probably one of the first people to really start this whole community thing in the you know, basic electronics repair, like to actually have start people talking. And I noticed that. And I noticed that the, 
I was getting messages from a lot of the people that were, were commenting on that on uh, their social media, which, which I'm, by the way, currently banned from. I can't talk on eTech social media because two years ago I said that I got a set of parts that didn't work well. So fuck eTech. Don't get, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to say anything positive about eTech. eTech e e can suck my dick. But the, the idea here is, you know, I visited, I thought I'd meet some of these people, and I was, I was away for three weeks. I was away for three weeks, and during those three weeks that I was away, my business actually did better than it did while I was present. And I'm not saying that to say that, like, I was ruining my business or anything like that. It just so happened that business had went up during those three weeks, but it really drove home the point to me that I'm not a necessary component of my business. I'm just looking here to, I know, step to make sure that I'm not out of disk space here. It always happens to me while I'm in the middle of making a point. It's, uh... Here we go. Are we out of disk space? Good. Not out of disk space. Whew. Always happens at the worst possible time. But what it told me is that I need to, uh... I need to find something else to do. Because when I go back home with the realization that I've been away for three weeks and there's nothing for me to do, that means that there's no longer a lot on my plate. And while that's a good thing, it's a good thing to get to a point where I can take three weeks off, it also means that if something were to go on that, I, that, that, you know, that just didn't go my way, that I'm now at a, how do I put this, a greater risk of allowing that one thing that didn't go my way to make me depressed. So in 2014, I decided to try some new things. I decided to join some groups of people that go, that do, you know, it wasn't something that I wound up staying with, but we did that just jog and run around the city. I decided to take time out to just go to museums on my spare time and you just do the minimum possible donation. Just take a day off and just go around and look at it. I decided to focus more of doing this YouTube channel. I decided to start filming board repair. I decided to start teaching board repair, to start you know, doing the tutoring thing with board repair. I decided to start selling different things at my business. I decided to start doing camera installs. I went to a licensing course to learn it. Um, and, and what I was trying to do there is I was trying to have multiple things on my plate. And there are things that have happened over the past year and a half that could have genuinely depressed me, that could have brought me down to a low point where I really don't feel that good about myself anymore. And I don't feel that useful anymore. And I don't feel that valuable anymore. And I don't really feel like I, you know, feel that good about anything anymore. And what's helped me throughout all of those times is having a full plate so that when that one thing happens that shit, it's still shit, it still sucks, but it's only 20% of my plate. It's not the only thing for dinner. Again, when you realize that cafeteria lunch at PS23 or IS24 is the only thing on your plate, that sucks. But when you bring your own lunch from home and you notice you're a little bit hungry at the ends of it, the cafeteria lunch sucks, but you already had some good food that you brought from home. It ain't that bad. So what I'm encouraging everybody to do here, I'm not necessarily saying that you, should, that you shouldn't go to a therapist, that you shouldn't go to a psychiatrist. I'm not one of those people that, dis, you know, my experience with therapy has sucked balls. I've talked about it. I think Eli has actually watched my videos and talked about my experience with therapy more than I've talked about my own experience with therapy. But my experience with therapy, for the most part, has been a complete pile of shit. I'm not saying therapy's a pile of shit. I'm saying my experience with it has been bullshit. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to therapy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to a psychiatrist or a support group or even take medicine if you have a legitimate condition. What I'm saying is that you should just add this to your arsenal. Add this to your tool belt. So you have the medication, you have the support group, you have the therapist. Add this to your, be add this to your tool belt. Ask yourself, audit yourself every now and then, is the plate of my life full? And if the plate of your life is not full, to the point where one thing going wrong is literally your entire day because that one thing going wrong is all there was, then I want you to think about what it is you could add to your plate so that you have other things to do. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying to go out and join a fucking pottery class or to volunteer at, 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 a, you know, at a homeless shelter or any, any of the really cookie cutter things that people just say you should do because that may not be necessarily what you're interested in. 
but find something that you're interested in. If you don't know what you're interested in, then uh, then start figuring out what may interest you. Try new shit, even if it, and don't be afraid to throw it away if it sucks. But find things to put on your plate so that at the end of the day, when you weigh the scales, if one thing sucked, it's not your whole day. And that, that that's the advice that I live by. I've seen it work for other people in lim- you know, to, to a limited extent. I've seen it actually improve their life when they, they try to follow this. It's something that, I, that I've been saying since I was about six or seven years old. And it's something that at 27 years old, I still firmly believe in. So try to find as many things that you can to do so that when something bad happens, it's not the end of the world. And that's it for today. I can't believe you went an entire video without disrupting my microphone. It was a good kitty. He was thinking of it. That's why he just jumped off the chair. Guilty mind. Guilty conscience.